news as Manchester United's finances have been put out there. Losses of over £113 million. I mean, it's unforgivable on behalf of the Glazers and, and the people who are in power before Ineos came in that United have found themselves in this situation. Was it down to, you know, having someone like to Alex Ferguson, you know, behind you guys, pushing you on? How did you guys deal with all of that? If you can't turn up and play for the likes of Man United and enjoy and expressing yourself playing football, well, you're in the wrong business. I was having such a great time. I know that my relationship has been unique. When my time was up at Man United, falling by the boss at the time, and he says to me, listen, you're most welcome back here anytime. They're mine players to finish sport. There's class players all over the pitch, and that, that's why I'm concerned that there might be a bit of a backlash from what happened uh, against Liverpool. I am very worried about this game, more than I should be, but it is what it is. Hello and welcome to Inside Devils, the talk sports show dedicated to all things Man United. I'm your host, Flex, and despite the international break, we've got a lot to discuss on this week's show. As always, we're joined by our esteemed panel to debate and digest the week that has been at Old Trafford. So, I'm thrilled to welcome back TalkSport chief correspondent Alex Crook and TalkSport reporter Angelina Kelly. We are out of the international break, on our way back into the Premier League. That means you're excited and you think we're going to win. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do think we're going to win. Uh, we have to win, don't we? I mean, there's no excuse not to go to Southampton and win, and I mean that with no disrespect. But I'm excited about the return of the Premier League. I was at Wembley uh, for the Finland game in midweek, but I, I do find these international breaks at this time of the season pretty tedious. To yeah, it's just a little bit of a... Not that we had much momentum anyway, but it can be a momentum breaker, can't it, Andrew? Yeah. yeah, definitely. It's just that kind of lull period where you just want it to get back. And obviously, it wasn't great for us, but normally, if you've had like a good run of one or two games, you want to keep it going. So it, it can be quite dangerous for some teams, but for, for Man United, I mean, it can't get worse, <laughs> surely. So. She says, she <laughs> says, um, well, the, the seatbelts are on. But before we carry on about the Premier League, this Saturday saw a Man United Legends team take on Celtic in a special match at Old Trafford in aid of the Manchester United Foundation. Wayne Rooney stole the headlines with a 25-yarder, top bins, free kick, was doing the rounds on social media. Absolutely brilliant, which brought the clock back to the glory years at Old Trafford. And it sparked a lot of conversation about people's favourite Man United memories. So we're going to do the same right now. And I'm delighted to say we're joined by Man United treble winner and legend, X-Red Devil, Dwight York. Thank you so much, Dwight, for taking the time out to join us. How are you, man? Very well, thank you. Thank you. Now, listen, we're not going to dwell on this too much on the last few games, but just quickly, what have you made of Manchester United's start to the season so far? I think like every United fan, a bit disappointed in, in terms of the results. Um, kind of where we left off last season hasn't really kicked on. We expected to, to certainly be in a position where we could have had six points and then here we are only on three points. So... Not particularly a great start, not really encouraging, even at early stage like this in the season. So, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done and probably a long season ahead. Yeah, definitely a long yeah. season ahead. Um, it, as fans, obviously, we, we want a quick start, especially after how tough it was last season. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think we're going to have to be very, very patient this year as we are in the last couple of years because it's, it's been a terrible start and the pressure um, has been ramping up. Okay, yeah, second. listen, I, there's, there's no secret there. Um, you know, coming off of the back of last season, even though we had won a major competition, which is great for the football club in terms of continuing that legacy of winning a trophy, that's all well and good. But in terms of actually where the Premier League since 1992, since the start of the Premier League, this, it's been our worst season recorded. And so that, from that point of view, it's not particularly great for us. Um, coming off the back of, you know, where we should have qualified in the Champions League, a, a group that we should have advanced were relatively easy. That was hard work. And of course, finishing eight in the season, the lowest deficit of goals, the lowest number of goals scored, and the list continued to go on. So, and in terms of the identity, the passion, what you, you used to see, the way our Man United play, the lackluster sort of performance, uh, you, you know, there's quite a lot there to ponder. And, uh, as an ex-player and ex, uh, obviously a fan, you're not quite seeing where, where it's going to change going forward. And that's the difficult part of it. Yeah, for sure, Dwight. I mean, we'll get straight back to the team in the current day, in the present moment, in just a while. But one of the best things about these chari charity games is the reunion 
of old teammates. Now, you yourself played in the 99 reunion against Bayern um, in 2019. I was there at that. I see you dusting off the boots. You, you looked all right. I'm not going to lie. You was all right, mate. You was quite sharp. Um, do you take it seriously as, as like a, you know, like a Premier League game or is it a little bit of a, a more chill vibe? Is there a big party after? What's the sort of mentality going into these sort of charity games? Because you guys are still competitive, right? Yeah, I think the competitiveness really uh, kicks in when you do go onto the football pitch. But off the football pitch, there's a lot of fun, a lot of reminiscing about the old good days and talking about what people uh, are up to, who's who's doing what, and uh, and that type of stuff, that kind of conversation. But ultimately, when you go on the pitch, that there is always this sort of competitiveness and that drive continue to be installed in you. So when you go out there, you, you want to win the game. Um, but uh, generally speaking, it's a, a, a relaxed environment, really uh, catching up with some old friends, some friends that you haven't been able to see, players that you haven't seen for a while. Uh, and uh, obviously reconnecting with the fans and having that opportunity to be at the theatre three for one last time. You keep saying one last time, but it never seems ending. Because <laughs> you always it, come back. <laughs> yeah, they always, the charity game seems to be coming all the time, but it's always a thrill to come back whenever you've been invited to. Dwight, I still remember 99 like it was yesterday, so it's quite scary that 25 years have passed, but every United fan of a certain vintage has a, a favourite memory, a favourite game. Mine is the, the second leg of the semi-final in Turin when we came from 2-0 down against a, a star-studded Juventus team. You scored twice in the quarter-final, two identical goals from Beckham, free kicks against Inter Milan. What's your favourite game, favourite memory of that incredible year? I'm not sure if there is a favorite game because there's so much fun memories in, in winning that, uh, being part of that triple winning team. I think right throughout, obviously, my first year at the football club, so I was really excited and thrilled. I, I leave uh, Aston Villa for a purpose and a reason to, to win a major competition. I never thought that we would be winning three competition in, in one season and to be part of what considered the most historical moment in the club history. Every game was vital. Every game was nail biting. There was so much joy and fun and the excitement to play for Man United. So I thoroughly enjoy it. I know that people will say, oh, yeah, you must have a favorite game. But every game to me was so important. And, uh, you know, you look back even in the, in, the, in the group of debt that we were placed in with the likes of obviously uh, Bayern Munich and uh, uh, Barcelona. The game in Barcelona, that 3-3 that three, three was a, a classic game, you know, uh, having to, to showcase your talent in, in such a, a high-stake game, it's, it's just quite incredible. And, of course, in the manner that we won the treble, uh, when we wasn't at our most best, so to speak, uh, and leave, and obviously the likes of Kino and scores not being part of that, not that the other players was, wasn't competent in coming in and doing the job. But well, we managed to get the job done and we know what it meant to the football club and to just be part of all of that, what I just said. I don't think word could actually describe what that feeling was like. And uh, obviously, it's a, it's a memorable moment that will always remain with you and the people who is involved. I'm sure it would be the same for the fans as well, but uh, incredible moment and an historical moment in the club history. And Dwight, you talk about that being such a historical moment. I can only imagine the amount of pressure that will have been on you guys. There's a lot of talk nowadays about player mentality and pressure and being able to push through those difficult games and get to the finish line. How did you guys deal with it as a team? Was it kind of a collective thing of keeping each other going? Was it something kind of separately you dealt with? Was it down to, you know, having someone like Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, behind you guys pushing you on? How did you guys deal with all of that? There's a combination of everything there. I don't, I don't use the word pressure lightly when you come from the Caribbean, living in a, a bungalow house of you know nine kids with with, with uh, two bedroom. That's pressure when you can't afford the the luxury of uh, food on the table and that type of stuff. So that's not pressure. I I, I don't like using that word. It's if you can't enjoy those moments, but you work hard throughout your life to get to a position of enjoying and expressing yourself that you get paid heaps and heaps of, lot of, of thousands of pounds to play. I, I don't understand how players can relate to that peer pressure. So I, I, I take a different view on it. I think it was just an incredible moment that you will, you know, not many, many people could say they actually want it. Obviously, City has been able to do that, but we were the first team to, to ever accomplish that. And if you can't enjoy those moments, if you can't turn up and play for the likes of Man United and enjoy 
and expressing yourself playing football, well, you're in the wrong business because we are in the entertainment business. And at some point, it's all going to come to an end. You look back at your career and you think, oh, if I only done this, if you had only done that. Those were the moments you have to enjoy. And if you get, so we enjoyed that. There was a bit of, you know, uh, I won't say uh, a, bit, a little bit of disconnection there that people didn't get on, but the reality that there was a, a team that was united when it matters the most on the football pitch, and that was enticed and drive by the, obviously, so Alex Ferguson himself. And uh, he's such a winner. We had a, a winner in Roy Keane leading us uh, out there, and we know what it meant to the football club of playing that. But I go back to saying, if you can't enjoy those moments, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're in the wrong business. Because you're, in we the are wrong, in, you're in the wrong place. In, in the entertainment <laughs> business, exactly. So... Uh, as I said, the word pressure is not something that I really connect with because I understand what pressure is like. And, and I'm sure for many other families out there that can't afford to, to, you know, things for their kids and pay the light bill and mortgages, we still win, lose or draw, we get paid. And, and I think sometimes we, we take that for granted. Mm, very interesting to hear you say that. I mean, you speak about the winner's mentality and, and Kino, but you also touched on the greatest manager there's ever been in Sir Alex. It's not arguable. He is the greatest manager of all time, um, whose influence still lives on within the club. Is there anything that you that you took from Sir Alex that still lives with you today in, in your in your day to day? Even you think oh, the boss would have done that or the boss would have done this. Well, listen, I think that uh, we all wasn't perfect. I, I made mistakes in my time, even at Villa uh, and and even at Man United under the, the greatness of Sir Alex Ferguson. I mean, we, we, life is about making mistakes and it's made you into a better person. Uh, I, I'm sure if I can turn the clock back, there are some things I would be able to do differently. But it does mold you into a better person going forward. And I've learned a lot from Sonic Ferguson. I'm very lucky. Even to this day, I can still pick the phone up and call him. I used to get a lot of Christmas cards all the time until I moved to Dubai now. But uh, to that point, I know that my relationship has been unique. And I think the one thing that I, I recall even when my time was up at Man United, I was called in by uh, I was calling by the boss at the time, and he says to me, "Listen, I'm going to let you go, but rest assured, you're most welcome back here anytime. And anything that you you can, I can do for you, uh, the door is open, the, the phone is always there. You can always pick the phone up, and that's the detriment of the man. He wasn't just a manager; he was a man manager, someone who you could relate to." Yes, I didn't agree with all the things he had done and some things like that, but that's part and parcel of it. But the reality that he he was such a fantastic person and all he was a football man. He he, he didn't do it. He made football decision. It wasn't personal. He was making decision football for him for the football club and the right thing. And at the time in the bubble, you can to think and think. Well, yeah, he's been a little bit difficult. But when you look at his position he made the correct decision for the football club. And I think that's the thing that I've taken away most from him. You've got to make decisions. And in life, you're not always going to please everybody. You're going to get some things wrong. But most of the time, I would say Sir Alex Ferguson got most of it right. 